I feel like I'm in a little bit of a free fall, waiting for when God's going to catch us. You know, because a lot of the stories in the Bible, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't promise us that everything is going to be good along the way. I just didn't know it was all going to happen in a two-year span. I wasn't ever prepared for that. This last two years has been life-altering and um, not in a really great way. My father having Alzheimer's, Tanya's father um, recently dying from a uh, brain tumor and you know along the way the anchor room which was the family business uh, closing so it's kind of like these three big pillars in our life have been ripped from us. My dad has been, it's like he's not my dad. Um, and the more I read about it, the more I've had to reconcile that it, he's still in there somewhere. But for a long time, I felt like somebody else was walking around in my dad's body and my dad was already gone. But I never had a chance to say goodbye to him. Tanya lost her dad and I lost a dad and our kids lost their grandpa. Our kids lost Papa. And uh, watching them say goodbye in the hospital when they knew that he was going to die was a really hard gift because it, it was really good for them to be able to do that, but it was really hard for them to walk into that room and know that Grandpa wasn't going to make it. And, and the story's not over. The story's still being written. There's lots of chapters left in this whole story and it's just hard to see. It's just hard to see those pages in front of you and how they're going to be written because it feels really out of control. And I think at the root of my heart and soul I still believe that the words no I I don't think, I, I still believe that what the Bible says is true. And so I have to believe that God's timing is perfect, but I'd be lying if I didn't say I had my doubts. Like, why does it all have to happen? I just have a lot of whys. Like, why God? Why does it all have to happen in a two year span? Why three months before Paul was diagnosed did Paul and Pauline have to cut their life insurance more than in half? Why did the store have to go under? Why did they have to lose their house to the bank? Why, <laughs> why does there have to be so much struggle along with loss? Well, you know, Tanya always used to say, God doesn't give you anything more than you can handle. And, you know, I've always held on to that, but yet, I guess that quote doesn't say, God doesn't say he, he won't allow us to go to the brink. <laughs> because I feel like there's been some days, literally, where I'm looking off the edge of the cliff, you know, and saying, okay, God, um, do you still care? And I know the answer to that is yes. But I used to feel that or have a sense of that more often. All I can do is, is hold on to what I know is true that God promises that everything that happens he's going to eventually use for our good. But it, I guess it, where it upsets, where I get upset about it is like, do we have to wait until heaven? Um, because life I thought was supposed to be a gift too. And so, I, you know, I, I just really have trouble right now holding on to the future is going to be better than the past. 
but I also know that I can't see God's plan and I can't see how he's going to use this and I I can't see what he sees but I sure wish he would give me a glimpse <laughs> just a glimpse when I came here especially just the last two Sundays I was afraid people might say oh is he being fake is he you know is he really that joyful in this time of loss and sorrow and for me both can be true there there is loss and sorrow all around me in my current state but there's still joy and love and adoration for God all around me at the same time. And worship isn't about me. Worship is about Him. And so for me, it's shifting my focus from down here to up there. And that's why it's not fake for me. It's real. But if I, if I said that I didn't struggle with making that choice, I'd be lying. I do struggle. It's, it is a battle.